China's January car sales figures have just been released. Very, very interesting to see what's happened because it's extremely concerning for Legacy Auto. I know I've been going on and on about this and you're probably sick of hearing it. But reality is China is the world's largest car market. And boy, oh boy, are Legacy Auto struggling in China. Basically right now, Legacy Auto are selling old Nokia 3310s or whatever they were called. Whereas Tesla and many Chinese automotive companies are selling smartphones for the same price. Who do you think is going to win? Hello, my friends, and welcome to the new Electric Viking office. This is it. I know it's a bit echoey right now. I'm going to try and see if I can fix that. Let me know if you've got any ideas in the comments section below for how I can get rid of a bit of this echo that I can hear. I know the wooden floors are probably helping, not helping that situation. But anyway, this is the new office and I'll try and get some pictures up. I'm going to try and have a different picture every day for a year. They're coming soon. I've ordered some interesting pictures. Besides that, I've moved here because my original office, it was just too noisy during the day. It was too hard to get videos done during the day. I was having to stop and start. And it was big truck noises and I had to make a move, but it took two months to get here because the internet, they had to dig a trench outside and hook the internet up. It was a big rigmarole. And finally, we're here. Finally, I'm in the office. China's January sales of new energy vehicles were 412,000. That's an increase of 140% year on year. Now, if we see an increase of 140% for the whole year versus last year, that will mean that China will sell 8 million electric cars this year. And that is way more than 10% of all cars sold in the entire world this year. Yet you can see the tipping point is well and truly here. Even if we only hit 100%, even if it declines drastically from the 140 we're at right now, it goes down to 100, which it appears to be trending in the opposite direction, we're still going to see 7 million electric cars sold in China this year. So China's wholesale sales of new energy passenger vehicles were 412,000 in January. That's an increase of 141.4% year on year. However, it is down 18.5% from December. But, big but, the January sales decline is completely relative to December and it is consistent with the January 2021, 2020 and 2019 characteristics. It's the same. Every year, January and February are very slow months for the Chinese. They don't, they seem to go on holidays then or they don't buy cars then or it's just a big slowdown. So to be honest, these sales numbers are significantly higher than I predicted, than most people have predicted. Very surprising to see that Tesla, for example, could sell six, or could build 60,000 cars, only down from the 70,000 they did in December of last year. I expected Tesla's figures to be down 50% of what they were in December, because that would have been the average decline. In fact, the average decline would have been even more than that. But somehow, Tesla was able to do that many. BYD, same thing. BYD actually kept their numbers the same from December last year. I don't know how they did that. Maybe it's something to do with their fact that their factory, which was affected by COVID shutdowns in December and November last year, has is now fully open for January. Maybe that helped them catch back up. This number of 410,000 includes 333,000 fully electric vehicles, as well as 79,000 plug-in hybrids, accounting for 81% and 19% respectively. So you can see here in China, 81% of people who buy a a vehicle with a battery in it, buy a fully electric one. Only 19% buy a plug-in hybrid. Clearly, when do you have the choice of buying a plug-in or an electric for a similar price? You can see here, 82% or 81% of people go with fully electric. Makes sense. Retail sales of new energy passenger vehicles in China rose 132%. But that's a bit of a confusing number. So let's just stick with the original 142% increase. Late last year, Chinese new energy vehicle market saw an incredible rush of deliveries, which was just nobody predicted what would happen. That left the first 10 days of January with a relatively weak sales performance, or at least delivery performance. Key issue here is not sales numbers because companies like Xpeng, BYD, Neo, even Tesla, they're all selling way more than they can build. So how many cars were actually sold in China, period, including gas powered diesel cars, electric cars, everything? 2.17 million cars were sold. That's an increase of 6.8% year on year, but it's down 8.2% from December. 
which is actually a surprisingly large number. Like I said before, January is normally down even more than that. But there's been a bit of a post-COVID rebound in China, in car sales. So 2.17 million. CNEV Post says that overall, while China is still seeing the emergence of COVID-19 cases, the relatively mild prevention and control initiatives have not had a significant impact on residential travel and vehicle purchase spending. So what percentage of all cars sold in January in China were fully electric? Well, the total penetration of new energy vehicles was nearly 20%, about 19.5%. That's down from the 21.3% than it was in December of last year. In January, new energy vehicle penetration among local brands, though, keyword local brands as in Chinese brands, was 32% and 23% for luxury Chinese brands compared to just 2.7% for mainstream brands. In other words, legacy auto brands, Toyota, Mercedes, BMW, Honda, General Motors, Ford, all these companies, only 2.7% of their vehicles sold in January had a battery in them. Whereas for Chinese vehicles, locally made ones, it was 32%. 32 compared to 2.7. So that's nearly 11 times higher percentage in other words, Legacy Auto are completely, I want to swear because this is just so ridiculous, right? 32%, I've got to say this again, 32% of Chinese local brands, their vehicles, one in three of all their Chinese local brands, one in three cars was fully electric. Whereas less than one in 30 of Legacy Auto vehicles were electric. You can see here, Legacy Auto is being left in the dust absolutely left in the dust because what is the trend? What have, what's the trend we've been seeing for the last five years, but in particular, the last two years, that is the trend away from gas vehicles and towards electric vehicles. It's been a rapid trend over the last 12 months. In particular, Legacy Auto are absolutely screwed in China, which is the world's largest vehicle market. Wholesale sales of pure play EVs in January were 333,000. That's an increase of 131% year on year. Plug-in hybrid sales were 79,000. That's an increase of 200% year on year. That's pretty much mostly down to BYD. BYD sold 40 something thousand. So you can see BYD has about 60% of the plug-in hybrid market in China. Now, the really interesting part about these numbers is the fact that companies are buying electric vehicles at a higher rate than personal buyers. Why? It all comes down to money, the cost to buy the car, the cost to run it, the cost to operate it, and then the cost that you get when you resell it. The interesting thing is that for actual public consumers, not companies, just personal private buyers, the sales were only 16.6%. But for private, but for actual companies, electric vehicle sales were nearly 25% in China. In other words, one in every four vehicles sold period, including legacy auto vehicles, was fully electric. Why? It all comes down to cost of ownership, cost of running the vehicle. And obviously, if you're a company, cost of ownership matters even more than what it does for private buyers. Now, for private buyers though, the penetration rate of electric vehicles among local brands in China, as in non-legacy auto, was 31.4%. It was 10.2% for Chinese luxury vehicles and 2.5% for legacy auto. Only 2.5%. Yeah, that is completely unsustainable. What about exports? Electric vehicles exported from China in January were 52,000. Most of those came from Tesla, but that was a lot more than the 8,000 that were exported last year. Tesla exported 40,500 vehicles made in China. SAIC exported 4,800. Dongfeng exported 4,257. And Geely exported 444. Geely manufactures most of their electric cars that they sell overseas, actually in overseas markets. In addition, Great Wall Motors exported 408, SAIC Maxxis 406, and BYD 313. Very interesting here. 11 companies sold more than 10,000 electric vehicles. 11 different companies. That's six more, six more than the same month last year. BYD's sales were 93,100. Tesla, 60,000. SAIC GM Wuling, 40,000. Sherry, 21,000. Geely, 17,000. GAC Aon, 16,000. SAIC Passenger Vehicles, 14,414. Great Wall Motor, 13,781. By the way, they're pretty much all Aura vehicles. 
Xpun, 12,922. Leoto, 12,270. And Nita with 11,000. However, there's about five more companies that are about to hit that mark this year. By the end of this year, more than likely there will be 20 local companies in China selling more than 10,000 electric vehicles per month, up from only six last year. So that tells you the story of what's going on in China. Why does it matter? Well, because Chinese, the Chinese market will dictate the world globally, much of it. Why? Because China and Europe are pretty much the same thing. They're buying the same kind of vehicles. The trends are the same. The percentages are the very, very similar. And when you put those two together, well, they make up about half of the world's vehicle sales, but they make up well over more than half of the world's vehicle production. As you can see, Legacy Auto are in for a rough ride over the next decade. What I wanna know is who do you think will survive and who do you think will go bankrupt? Let me know in the comment section below. See you again on the next video. Bye-bye.